Welcome to Projectarian, I'm JC. Today I want to show you my technique for crocheting with furry yarn. I've always had a bad time using fur yarn. It can get confusing really fast and lead to so much frustration that you end up just abandoning a project. I know there are loads of you out there who feel the same way, but I want the world to know that there are things you can do to make working with fur yarn a bit easier. I mean, it's never gonna be as easy as using smooth yarn, but it can become something that's possible for you and a lot easier with a lot less frustration. I'm on a mission this year to help crocheters overcome their fur phobia. Crocheting with fur is definitely possible for everybody. I'm calling this event Projectarian's Year of Fur and for the whole of 2022 all of my patterns are going to be fur themed. The purpose of this theme is to help you try something new in ways that aren't too intimidating for those who've had bad experiences with fur or those who've never even tried it. Throughout the year there will be furry projects of varying difficulty levels along with other resources like videos to help build your confidence. If you want to be part of this event and you don't want to miss anything, there are a few ways you can stay in the loop. You can of course subscribe to my YouTube channel and switch on the notifications so you don't miss any new videos. You can join my mailing list at my website which will give you a notification every time I release a new pattern. You can follow along on Instagram, um, that's where I'm most active. I'm there just about every day. And the other option would be to join my Facebook group where we have a community of crocheters who enjoy my patterns where you can get advice or discuss projects. During the Projectarian's Year of Fur event there will be a few freebies so you can dip a toe in the water without too much commitment. Right now I'm actually busy working on a free pattern in collaboration with Skia Peas Yarn which you can see sneak peeks of on my Instagram at the moment. I've already released one furry pattern this year and that is shuttle the shongololo. <laughs> shongololo is a millipede for those who don't know. I decided to make a giant African millipede. Mine is two meters long with 136 legs but I didn't want shuttle to be the odd one out this year so I made a little furry version of him as well. So you can go and download that pattern for free and it will show you how to make a simple version of the millipede with furry yarn as a little practice run. Coming up soon I also have Neptune the pineapple crab. The furry element in this project is a pineapple that flips inside out to become a hermit crab. So you can see sneak peeks of that on my Instagram in the meantime and that pattern will be coming out very soon so stay tuned for that. The technique that I use for crocheting fur is very simple and it's nothing new. There are people who already use this technique. I'm just going to go through it and maybe I have a few extra tips that you haven't heard of before but let's get into it. I use four basic rules when crocheting with fur to help combat the challenges. Rule number one being to crochet with two threads of yarn at a time. One thread being furry yarn and one being a smooth yarn. This will make your stitches a lot easier to see because the smooth yarn traps some of the fur and pushes it out of the way so the stitches are a lot easier to see but not so much that you actually lose the effect of the fur. Using smooth yarn with fur already makes it easier to see your stitches but to make it even easier you can use a contrasting color. So you can definitely use this technique with a matching color and I've done that in my past two projects already this year. This is the first one where I'm using a contrasting color. Um, that's just if you want to make your stitches really clear. But if these were matching colors it still helps a lot. You would definitely still be able to see all of your stitch loops quite clearly just by having the smooth yarn in between the fur. Rule number two is to use a big hook. So when we make a migurumi, we are used to using very small hooks and working our stitches very tightly. But when you're using fur yarn, you don't have to do that. When you're combining two threads of yarn, your yarn is going to be very thick, so you can definitely use a bigger hook than you normally would for a migurumi. The other benefit is the pile of the fur, which is the actual furry fibers, will hide any gaps and holes that you have between your stitches. So you can use a big hook that makes big holes between your stitches, but you don't see them because the fluffy fur hides them. This also makes your rows and stitches a lot easier to count, which I'll demonstrate a little bit later in the video. And it also makes them a lot easier to crochet into because loose stitches are always easier to work 
thin tight ones. Another handy tip to remember is that you shouldn't crochet too tightly because no matter how big your hook is then you will struggle to get into your stitches. And also keep in mind that if you're using fur that is very short then the gaps between your stitches will be more visible so then you would use a smaller hook and if your pattern doesn't allow for that then you would use different fur to actually conceal the gaps. Rule number three is to choose a simple project. The fur is going to be the star of the show anyway so you don't need to have all sorts of details in order for your model to look interesting. On the contrary, any detail that you do have is just going to disappear in the fur anyway, so it's just not worth going to the effort. So when you're deciding what to crochet with your fur yarn, stick with simple shapes and save yourself the unnecessary frustration. I've designed all my patterns this year with very simple shapes, so you can rest assured that if you see any furry elements in my patterns, even from last year, um, I have designed them with you in mind to make them easy to crochet, keeping everything simple. So, um, you know, parts of the pattern where I use plain yarn, I'll add details and complexity there. And then for the furry bits, I'll keep the shapes very simple so that the furry bits are very easy. Our fourth and final rule is to forget perfection. So far, everything I've spoken about is how to combat the difficulties of working with fur yarn, but there is a saving grace. The attribute that makes fur yarn so difficult is the same attribute that gives you a lot of leeway. The fact that it's difficult to see your stitches between all this fur means that if you make a mistake, no one's going to know. Nobody's going to know. They're going to know. Under normal circumstances, I would never ever recommend this, but with fur, if you make a mistake, you can fudge it. I give you permission. <laughs> if you do something that is easy to fix and hide like say you were supposed to have 18 stitches in your round you get to the end of the row and you only have 17. You can definitely just work an increase in there pretend you had 18 all along. It's not worth unraveling to try and find where your mistake was and fix it. Speaking of unraveling um, I would like to also show you some troubleshooting tips so that if you do get yourself into a situation where you do need to unravel that you will be able to do that and then I also want to show you how to um, count your stitches and your rows so that you don't get muddled up too easily. And now we get to the crocheting part of the video where I'm going to actually demonstrate the technique of how to crochet with two threads. I'm going to be using red and yellow so they are very highly contrasting. My smooth yarn is quite chunky so it's even easier to see with my furry yarn. The pattern that I'm referring to following in this part of the video is just a prototype of the strawberry that I made for my strawberry jaboa and it's just a few simple rows that I'm going to be showing. Begin by crocheting just like you would with normal yarn. My pattern says to work six single crochets into a magic ring for row one so I'm going to begin and as I work my first single crochet I'm going to attach a stitch marker because it is really easy to get mixed up about where your first single crochet of the row is so to keep things clear and easy just attach a marker to your first stitch as you work it then I'm going to work five more stitches and as you can see it's not difficult at all and my first row is finished let's have a look at it I can clearly see my six stitches pretty much at a glance I don't even have to try hard to count them because my yellow is so contrasting it's very easy to see next to the red and because the yarn is smooth there's no question about where my stitches are if I wanted to specifically count them I can easily tell there's one two three four five six I worked my stitches into a magic ring but because I'm working with fur, I'm not going to pull my magic ring closed completely. I'll close it a bit, but I'm going to leave it enough that I can get my finger through there because that will make it easier to count your rows later on. You can always pull this tight later and weave in your loose end when you're done. So I'm going to start row two, and that means I'm going to start using a running stitch marker. I'm using a fat piece of yarn for this in a very contrasting color so it'll be really easy to see as I continue I'll be able to see where my running stitch marker is at all times. So I'm going to start my row 
by working into the first single crochet of row one, which is very easy to see because I've marked it. I'm going to remove my marker and work into that stitch. And my pattern says to work one single crochet, one increase, and repeat that all around. As you can see, there is no struggle getting into my stitches or seeing where they are. The only thing you do need to pay attention to is that you are picking up both threads every time you hook your yarn. So you want to make sure that you don't accidentally just pick up one. Just make sure that you pick up both threads every time. Row 2 is complete. I can tell very easily because I've reached my running stitch marker. And because of my running stitch marker, I can also tell very easily that there's my first stitch of the row, so that's where I'm going to start working my next row. Once again, the stitches are very clear and easy to see. If I wanted to count them, I can clearly see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to work a few more rows just to have a bigger piece to work with and then I'll show you some troubleshooting tips. With fur yarn you do still have to try and be conscious of what you're doing. I mean this method does make it a lot easier but um, you know you can still get muddled up so it's a good idea to pay attention. I find what makes things go a lot smoother is to make sure that I count as I go. So even though I know Technically, I'm just working a straight row. I know I'm just working one single crochet into every stitch. I do physically count them. I make sure that I worked 15 single crochets because the pattern said 15. I count them as I go so I know by the end of the row that I actually have 15. So that if a problem does come up, I can detect it early and I can do a quick fix or a fudge <laughs> and carry on without getting to the point of having to unravel and figure out where did I go wrong. Okay, I have a few rows here. Let's say I put my project down and I come back later and I have no idea where I am, so I need to figure out which row I'm on. So the easy way, stick your finger through the magic ring, so you know that is row one. And then each row makes a very discernible lump. So you can count the rows just by counting the bumps. So we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then I know I'm on row 7. Let's say your yarn is incredibly fluffy and you can't actually feel the bumps. There is another way. You can actually use your fingers to count. So I know there's my magic ring because it's a big hole. And I can stick my finger through the spaces between the stitches and I know that's my first row starting from the top or the bottom I know that's my magic ring and I move my finger up inside the workpiece and the next hole that comes out is row one and I move it up inside the workpiece and the next hole that comes out is row two row three row four row five row six row 7. Now what if you wanted to count your stitches and you can't quite see that? You can use your finger again. Now I know um, my running stitch marker tells me where the first stitch of my row is so that's easy so let's start counting there. So I know that's my first stitch because it's right next to the running stitch marker. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 
I want to quickly show you a few examples of using different tools. So if you're using a different type of yarn or a different size hook or different colors, you can see how the techniques and rules still apply in just about every situation. For this project, I'm using eyelash yarn and a non-furry yarn that is multicolored. Combining them makes this really cool colorway. And I'm using a six millimeter hook which just goes to show that you don't have to use a gigantic hook in order to be able to work with fur. This does make it just slightly more difficult to count your stitches, but as you can see, it's still very easy to work. The only thing is that the holes between my stitches are slightly smaller now, so it's not as easy to poke my finger through, but I can still feel very clearly where each stitch is. The other thing is with using a smaller hook your crocheting is obviously tighter which means the rows themselves are easier to feel. So the rows are easier to count by feeling the bump of each row rather than sticking your finger in the holes. The pattern that I'm working on here is called Octobubble. So you can see sneak peeks on my Instagram and if you're on my mailing list then you'll get a notification when this pattern comes out. In this example I'm using Furry Tails which is a very furry yarn, it's almost like a fur fabric in a very thin strip. And I'm just pairing that with a plain yellow yarn and I'm using a 10mm hook. So with this combination I can still count the stitches by pushing my finger between them and the same applies for counting the rows. For this example I'm going to use a sort of eyelash yarn I guess. What do you call this? I'm not sure but it has these very long stringy fibers and I'm using a matching color to show how easy it can still be if you don't use a contrasting color. This is the combination that I used for Luna the Lemur's tail and as you can see in the picture it turned out really fluffy and cute. I paired that with an 8mm hook that still leaves me plenty of space to stick my fingers in the gaps and count the rows and stitches um, and as you can see as well my stitches are still very clear. The actual loops are very clear and easy to see even though they worked in a matching colour. I do also want to show a demonstration of using a fluffier yarn with a matching colour and honestly it's not really that easy to match the colours precisely. This is about the closest match that I could find in my stash and I have a huge stash and these colours are still not identical so chances are your yarn won't match precisely so there will always be some contrast even if it's just very slight that will help you see your stitches. As you can see I'm having no trouble figuring out where I'm supposed to be working. I can see my stitches very clearly. I've worked three rows as a little example and it's definitely not as clear to see as if you were using contrasted colors but it's definitely much easier than if you didn't have um, a plain yarn mixed in with your fur because it pushes the fibers out of the way so that your stitch loops are still very clear to see and very easy to count. I used a 7mm hook here and that leaves me holes that are just big enough to get my finger in for counting rows and stitches. Here I'm using a very fluffy yarn with a complementary colour. It's a very light pink that matches the light pink on the tips of the fur so it should disappear and blend in on my finished model but it will still help me count my stitches and it will still help me with unraveling. I'm using a 10 millimeter hook which makes this fur nice and easy to work with. I've finished my second row and look how clear my stitch loops are. They get a little bit fuzzy at the beginning of the row but I can stick my finger in and find the first stitch I can feel there's the second one, there's the third one, and I can clearly see there's the fourth one. Those ones are very easy to count, so there is always a way to count your stitches.
I've done about three rows. There's my magic ring. So I can start counting by sticking my fingers through the holes to count the rows. And I can stick my fingers through the holes to count the stitches as well. This is my absolute favorite fur to work with because it just becomes a furry fabric. Like you can't even tell that that's crocheted. You can't even see the non-furry yarn that I've combined with it. It's just completely hidden inside there. Of course, if you use a contrasting color like the yellow that I used on this one, this is a much thicker yarn and it's a contrasting color, so it is visible. But with the thinner yarn in a very complementary color, it really does disappear unless you're actually looking for those stitch loops. Now let's say, the worst possible case, you've made a mistake and you need to actually unravel. Having the smooth yarn with your fur makes it a lot easier to unravel than just having fur. But you might still encounter problems. Let's say for example that your fur has much longer pile and therefore is more likely to not. So I'm going to try and unravel this and let's see what happens. I'm just going to start pulling on that. And already I'm stuck. So usually what I would have done is just pull really hard and you end up with a knot that is completely jammed and stuck and you can't get it unraveled and so then you try and cut it and then you just end up with even more of a mess and you have no idea what stitch and row you on and then you just give up on life. So I'm gonna show you how to get around that. The most important thing is not to pull very hard. You want to pull gently and if the stitch doesn't come undone, stop immediately. You want to untangle this as gently as possible without pulling it into a worse knot. So the aim, let me show you on this one, the aim when your yarn gets stuck is to grab the stitch loop and pull it up. That will disentangle the fibers and it will allow you to keep on pulling your working yarn undone. It's a bit difficult to see here, but I can logically assume that the highest point here is going to be my stitch loop. So I'm going to grab that and pull on it and wiggle it and see my yarn comes loose. Now I can carry on unraveling. And I'm pulling very gently. Now usually I think this type of yarn would probably tangle pretty quickly. There I've got another tangle already. So again, I'm not going to pull it into a tight knot. I'm not going to wrestle with it. I'm just going to grab it at the loop and see how easily it comes undone. Then I can carry on unraveling. Things are going pretty well. So as you can see, it really does also help to have that plain yarn in between the fur for unraveling purposes. Stuck again. I'm going to grab that stitch by the loop and now I can see it's come loose. I can carry on unraveling. And it really is that easy. And I promise you in every single case this works no matter what kind of fur you're using. Um, I used an eyelash yarn on my Luna the Lima. It has very long stringy hair that tangles just by looking at it. It's terrible. But combining it with a smooth thread and unraveling it very carefully meant that I was able to design with it. I was able to unravel because this method is guaranteed to unravel your stitches every single time. You just have to be gentle. Gently grab your stitch loop, pull it up, wiggle it if you need to and you'll see when it comes free then you can carry on pulling on your working yarn. So this really is a project rescuing technique just to learn how to unravel something the correct way. It gives you a huge boost of confidence to go into a project without the fear of what if I make a mistake, what if I need to unravel and I can't because now you're guaranteed even if all else fails. The worst case scenario is unraveling and now you have the ability to do that with confidence and know that you're not going to get permanently stuck at any point. That along with knowing how to count your rows and how to count your stitches means that you can't get stuck, you can't get lost, you will always be able to find your way and pick up where you left off if you've put your project down for a while or whatever the case is. I 
hope you found this useful because I really do want to equip you with the skills of crocheting with fur because it really is so much fun and the effect is just wonderful. So I really hope this helped you and if you still need help, please come to my Facebook group. Let's talk and let's get you through this. Um, definitely download my strawberry jobo pattern when it's out and give it a try. I promise you will be able to do this. Guaranteed, if you follow the advice in this video, you will be able to crochet my fairy patterns. I'm so excited to show you the other fairy techniques that I have in store. Um, you've already seen felting and latch hooking on my channel, but I'm going to be bringing out more of those patterns this year and a few other exciting things that you definitely won't want to miss. Thanks for watching. See you next time.